Good day again mga kapilo. This day, we will have another philosophical coffee session. So we will now be approaching our chapter 4 in our module in ethics. So let me just share my screen in order for us to start our discussion for the week. Okay. So we are now in chapter 4, topic 1. This is actually the frameworks and principles behind moral dispositions. And uh, for this uh, lecture, we will discuss about Aristotle and Aquinas. So the course objective for uh, this lecture, at the end of the course topic, the students are expected to, number one, discuss the different ethical frameworks espoused by Aristotle and St. Thomas Aquinas and apply these frameworks in various situations. So decisions concerning right and wrong actions permeate in our everyday life. We are actually doing it every day. We, we decide. And this decision has something to do with our right or wrong actions. So ethics is concerned on all levels of life, acting properly as individuals, creating responsible groups, organizations, institutions, and governments, and making our society as a whole more ethical. So these may be the concerns of ethics. This chapter aims to discuss various frameworks and principles in arriving and making ethical decisions in various or different situations. It recognizes that decisions about right and wrong can be quite difficult. It is not that easy and may be related to individual contexts. There are many systems of ethics actually and numerous ways to think about right and wrong actions or good and bad character. So the field of ethics is traditionally divided into three areas, tatlo yan. Una, meta-ethics. So meta-ethics deals with the nature of the right or the good, as well as the nature and justification of ethical claims. Number two is normative ethics. It deals with the standards. Okay, sorry. So it deals with the standards and the principles used to determine whether something is right or good and lastly, applied ethics. It deals with the actual application of ethical principles to a particular situation. Now, ethical theories are often broadly divided into three types naman siya. Kanina, yung areas ng ethics ngayon dito naman sayo sa ethical theories. The first theory is the agent-centered theory. Unlike consequentialist and non-consequentialist theories, they are more or these theories are more concerned with the overall ethical status of individuals. So it, it centers on the individuals or the actors or the agents and are less concerned to identify the morality of a particular action. For the consequ consequentialist theories, naman, they are primarily concerned with the ethical consequences of particular actions. So not the action itself yung kanyang focus, but the consequences or the effects of an action. Because there are actions which are good in themselves. There are also actions which are not good in themselves, but they can bring uh, good effects. This is like, for example, uh, Robin Hood. Bakit si Robin Hood nagnanakaw? Nagnanakaw si Robin Hood because he wanted to help uh, uh, his people. Yung dinanakaw niya, itinutulong niya din sa iba. So while it is true that ang pagnanakaw ay masama, yung nagiging effect ng pagnanakaw niya, eh nakakatulong siya ng maraming tao. So sa consequentialist theories, isa yan sa mga subject matter. Lastly, sa type of ethical theories, itong non-consequentialist theories, which tend to be broadly concerned with the intentions of the person making ethical decisions about particular actions. So, ang goal nit man nito ay yung intention ng tao. Ano nga ba yung intention ng tao? Bakit siya, for example, nagnakaw? 
Okay? Nagnakaw siya, yung intention niya, bakit siya nangopya? Bakit siya nagda-diet, for example? Bakit siya nag-aaral lang mabuti? Bakit siya natutulog ng sampung oras sa isang araw? So, yung intention ng tao ang pinag-uusapan dito, not the action itself, not the agent. Because in each uh, uh, type of the, uh, in each uh, three types of ethical theories, meron tayong kanya-kanyang uh, cover yung, yung mga theories na ito na tinutukoy natin. Now, we study about virtue ethics. In virtue, uh, virtue ethics is an approach in ethics which emphasizes an individual's character as the key element of ethical thinking rather than the rules about the acts themselves or their consequences. So again, our emphasis here is the individual's character. One of the main strands of virtue ethics is eudaimonism. What is eudaimonism? Uh, it holds that the proper goal of human life is eudaimonia, which can be variously translated as happiness, well-being, or the good life. And that this goal can be achieved by a lifetime of practicing the virtues in one's everyday activities, subject to the exercise of phronesis or practical wisdom or your application of a particular wisdom to resolve any conflicts or dilemmas which might arise. Now, a virtue is a habit or a quality that allows individuals to succeed at their purpose. Therefore, virtue ethics is only intelligible if it is teolo teleological. What is teleological? It has an end or it has a purpose. Okay, that is if it includes an account of the purpose or meaning of human life, a matter of some contention among philosophers since the beginning of time. Aristotle, with whom virtue ethics is largely identified, categorized the virtues as moral virtues, including prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance, and intellectual virtues, including Sophia, or theoretical wisdom and for the nesis or practical wisdom. He further argued that each of the moral virtues was a golden mean or desirable middle ground between two undesirable extremes. So the virtue, uh, example gratia or e.g., the virtue of courage is a mean between the two vices of cowardice and foolhardiness. So according to Aristotle, kasi, meron tayong tinatawag na golden mean. Ano ba tong golden mean? Golden mean is the middle ground of two excess. Okay? Pag may excess ka, hindi maganda. Hindi maganda yung sobra, hindi din maganda yung kulang. So dapat nasa gitna ka lang. The golden mean, uh, to, to simplify it, hindi pwedeng sobra yung pagkain mo, hindi din naman pwedeng kokonti yung kinakain mo. Dapat balance ka lang, nasa gitna ka lang. Hindi pwedeng sobra ang tulog mo, hindi pwedeng kulang din naman ang tulog mo, dapat tama lang. In doing some actions, dapat nasa gitna ka lang palagi. Hindi pwedeng so sobra, hindi rin pwedeng kukulang. That is the theory of the golden mean of Aristotle. Now, Aristotle's theory of morality centers around his belief that people, as everything else in nature, have a distinctive end and a function to fulfill. So meron daw tayong distinctive end and uh, to achieve and a function na dapat nating i-fulfill. In his Manium Opus, Nicomachean Ethics, he argues that every art and every inquiry and similarly even action and pursuit is thought to aim at some good. Dapat all the actions, all the things that we are doing is, is aimed at some good. So, telos or end. Ano nga ba ito? Aristotle sets the framework for his ethical theory with a preliminary illustration. Having said that all actions aim toward an end or the purpose, he now wants to distinguish between two major kinds of ends, which can be called instrumental ends, which are acts that are done as means for other ends, and intrinsic ends, which are acts that are done for their own sake. 
So we will, I will give you uh, a simple, uh, simple example here so that you will be able to understand the difference between an instrumental end and an intrinsic end. So these two kinds of ends are illustrated simply, for example, in activities connected with a basketball game. Here, there is a series of special kinds of acts. There is the sewer or your mananahi who sews the basketball uniform, uniforms for a team. The basketball uniforms are the byproducts of the sewer or your mananahi. When done, the sewer has already served his or her purpose or end. And that is to sew the basketball uniforms. However, the basketball uniforms are just means being used by the players to play the game. It has no connection at all to the skills that the players will be manifesting or will be performing later on in their game. Not because magandang basketball uniform mo, eh maganda na magiging performance mo sa basketball. The main goal of the basketball team is not to have the best uniform. Diba? Kasi wala namang award the best in uniform, di ba? Most valuable uniform, wala namang ganoon, di ba? Most valuable player, mythical five, and uh, best rebounder, yun ang mga awards. Or the champion or first runner-up, yun ang mga awards sa basketball, not best in uniform. Okay? So they have to give the best performance of their lives, the basketball players, ha, in the game, in order to bring home the crown. So hence, the act of sewing made by the sewer is only an instrumental end. While the basketball skills performed by the basketball team, particularly the basketball players, during the games are the intrinsic ends. Okay? Now, Aristotle contends that when we discover what people aim at, kung ano talaga yung ini-aim ng bawat tao, not only as sewers, mananahin, not only as basketball players, book authors, law professors, or law students, but as humans or as human beings, we will then arrive at the action for its own sake and for which all other activity is only a means and this must be the good of humanity. For example, another example class, why are you studying? Why you, you study because you want, you, want to be, uh, you want to be of help to your parents, for example. Wala naman nag-aaral para hindi tumulong later on sa uh, pamilya nila. Or para magkaroon ng magandang buhay. So the things that you are doing right now are just instrumental ends in your, in your final end. The final end is for you to, to finish your studies and for you to land a good job or uh, to, to have a good uh, business in the future. But these things also are instrumental ends. Ano ba yung final end? Ang final end ko, uh, gusto ko... Uh, magkaroon ng magandang buhay ang pamilya ko, magkaroon ng makatulong ako sa mga nangangailangan, uh, ma-share ma ko din kung ano yung meron ako. So the things that you are doing in order for you to attend the final end are just instrumental ends. Yung mga ginagawa niyong pag-aaral, yung ginagawa niyong pagpupuyat, yung ginagawa niyong mga module, yung ginagawa niyong panunood ng mga, mga lectures, these are just instrumental ends in your final end. Okay, so what is the function of human beings? Aristotle analyzes human nature in order to discover its unique activity, saying for of all that our human end is not merely life, because that is plainly shared even by vegetable. Hindi lang para mabuhay, kasi kahit ang microorganisms may buhay, kahit ang halaman may buhay, kahit ang hayop may buhay. So kung ang goal mo lang ay mabuhay, so napakababaw nito, kasi... Others have life too. Okay? Others have life too. Anong pagkakaiba mo sa gulay? Anong pagkakaiba mo sa puno? Anong pagkakaiba mo sa hype? Anong pagkakaiba mo sa microorganisms? Anong pagkakaiba mo sa germs? For example, may mga buhay din. So Aristotle says that there is something peculiar to human beings. It is not even because man has sensation. Because it is something that man shares with animals. Gusto mo lang magkaroon ng sensation kung gusto mo lang magkaroon ng desires, eh ang hayop may sensation din, may desires lang din yung mga yan, nakakaramdam din sila. So what remains then is an active life of the element that has a rational principle. So he contends that if the function of the people is an activity of the soul, then it implies a rational principle. In short, 
the human good turns out to be the activity of the soul in accordance with virtue. And that man is special. Take note of this. Man is special because of his rationality. Dahil meron tayo nito na wala sa hayop, na wala sa halaman. Walang halaman na nag-iisip. Walang, ha walang hayop ang nag-iisip. Tao lang ang nag-iisip. Okay, since a person's function as a human being means the proper functioning of the soul, Aristotle sought to describe the nature of the soul. The human soul is the form of the human body. And last time, I discussed to you that there are three different kinds of soul. And for Aristotle, uh, the human person has, uh, is, uh, the human soul, uh, pala, the human soul is divided into two components. Okay? Ito yun. So, the soul refers to the human person. Now, Aristotle argues that the soul has two parts or two components. The irrational part or the irrational component and the rational part or the rational component. The irrational part is composed of two subparts. So, yung irrational, lahat ipa sa dalawa. Yung vegetative soul or the vegetative component which gives us the capacity to take, to take in nutrition and to sustain our biological lives. And the appetitive appetitive or sensitive component which gives us the capacity to experience desires which in turn prompt us to move around to fulfill those desires. Both of these irrational parts of the soul tend to oppose and resist the rational part. Nakikipaglaban yung irrational part dun sa rational part mo. Kasi may mga gusto ka na sometimes hindi naman dapat. Mayroon kang mga gustong gawin na pag-iisipin mo hindi mabuti. Because these are uh, the the temptations of the irrational part of the soul. The conflict between the irrational and the rational elements in human beings is what raises the problems and subject matter of morality. Because sometimes, yung pinakagustong-gusto mong bagay na, na gagawin, sometimes it is in contradiction with morality. Hindi ito yung tamang ginagawa. Human actions should imply that the rational element should control and give guidance to the irrational part of the soul. So the good person is not the one who does a good deed here or there, now and then. Instead, he or she is the person whose life is good. For us, it is not one fine day that makes a spring. So it is not one day or a short time that makes a person happy. In other words, the good person knows what is good and always does what is good and in a day-to-day -day basis. Araw-araw alam mo na ito yung tama. Araw-araw ginagawa mo yung tama o yung good. Aristotle now opens his discussion of virtue in Book 2 of the Nicomachean Ethics with the observation that while virtue primarily originates in teaching, moral virtue comes as a result of habit. In other words, virtue is a disposition rather than an activity. Disposition ito, hindi lang siya basta-basta ginagawa. Dapat ito yung kagustuhan mo. Ito talagang meron ka na kahit walang nakakakita, ginagawa mo. So, moral virtue comes from a habit kasi kung lagi mong ginagawa, nagiging habit ang isang mabuting bagay. Now, the causal or the casual connection between good habits and virtues is made in two distinct ways. Dalawang bagay. First, virtues are states of character rather than passions or faculties. And states of character are created only through habituation, kapag palagi mo na nga siyang ginagawa. Second, virtue requires consistently good choices. Consistent, ibig sabihin, hindi yung pautay-utay, hindi yung ganito later, later on magbabago. Hindi nagbabago, consistent na ginagawa. Good, consistently good choices and a choosing for its own sake. Because good habits give rise to consistent patterns of action and mold the passions to feel pleasure and pain rightly. 
they are instrumental in meeting these requirements of virtue. The formation of good habits is essential in Aristotelian good life at which virtues aim. As Aristotle comments, it makes no small difference then whether we form habits of one kind or another from our very youth. It makes a very great difference or rather all the difference. For Aristotle, moral habits need not be self-created. They can just as well originate in youth or legislation as from within the individual na sa atin, na sa loob na natin. The process by which habits are created is not clearly specified, although he likens that process to learning skills such like playing the guitar, driving a car, or cooking dishes in that all of these require actual practice at the actions themselves. Okay, hindi mo matututuhan or matututunan ang maggitara, ang magmaneho, ang magluto ng dishes kung hindi mo siya gagawin. Kahit gaano ka manood ng mga YouTube videos about tutorial, kahit gaano ka magpaturo uh, sa mga tutors diyan sa sa maru, magaling mag sa marunong maggitara sa marunong magmaneho at sa marunong magluto kung hindi ka naman magigitara hindi mo susubukan hawakan yung gitara hindi mo susubukan hawakan yung manobela hindi mo susubukan magluto ng gusto mong ilutong ulam or dish hindi ka matututo so ganun din sa paggawa ng actions hindi porke alam mo eh alam mo lang dapat ipinapraktis mo dapat ginagawa mo is according to Aristotle, the moral habits should be practiced. The moral habits should be actualized. Hindi lang nasa isip. Dapat ginagawa at ginagampanan mo. So the results of forming such good habits are settled dispositions to act virtuously coupled with pleasure in choosing virtuous actions so that they could come easily and naturally to the individual. Natural na lang na lumalabas yung good actions and virtuous habits kung lagi mong ginagawa. So, excuse me, ha? So, in fact, morality has something to do with developing habits. The habits of right thinking, right choice, and right behavior. In short, in doing good actions, a person can develop that kind of doing into a habit. And the habit becomes so instilled in him. Okay, nandito na sa mismo pagkatao mo. And thus, it becomes his way of life. Yung paggawa ng kabutihan ay nagiging way of life kung palagi mong ginagawa. If you always extend help to other people who are in need, Lagi mong ginagawa. So it, it becomes natural for you. Hindi yung ginagawa mo lang kasi you're expecting something in return or you want to to be famous for example. I-YouTube video mo lang yan. I-vlog mo lang yan. Kung ganun lang yung ginagawa mo, hindi siya magiging habit. So ang pagtulong at uh, paggawa ng kabutihan be, uh, should be a habit. It should be a way of life. There is a saying, to do good is to feel Good. Now, happiness as virtue. Human action should aim at its proper end. Everywhere in this world, people aim at pleasure. Siyempre, sino ba naman ang ayaw ng pleasure? Sino ba naman ang ayaw ng wealth? Sino ba naman ang ayaw ng fame, ng power, and ng honor? These ends may have some type of value. Pero, however, they are not the main good for which people should aim. You should not only aim for pleasure, wealth, fame, power, and honor. To be the ultimate end, an act must be self-sufficient and final. That is, it should always be desirable in itself and is never for the sake of something else. It must also be attainable. For Aristotle, happiness is a final end or goal that encompasses the totality of one's life. It is not something that can be gained or lost in a few hours, like pleasurable sensations. 
it is more like the ultimate value of your life as lived up to this moment, measuring how well you have lived up to your full potential as a human, as a human being. So sabi nga nila, you live your life to the fullest. And how will you live your life to the fullest? So you, you must determine kung ano yung mga dapat mong gawin. Because when you live your life to the fullest, you, you, you will be happy. And how will you be able to happy? So dapat, uh, to, be, uh, to be happy, to attain happiness, dapat ginagawa mo yung mga bagay na mabuti. That is according to Aristotle. Okay? To simply put it, Aristotle is sure that all people want to be happy. Eh, sino ba namang ayaw ang hindi gusto maging masaya? Sino ba naman ang gusto maging malungkot na lang habang buhay? Or sino ba naman ang gusto maging miserable? So the reason why people do these things and those things is that they want to be happy. Mag-gym ako para maging masaya ako. Mag-aaral ako para maging masaya ako. Kakain ako ng kakain para maging masaya ako. Maglalaro ako ng PS5 para maging masaya ako. Bibili ako ng bagong telepono para maging masaya ako. Uh, bibili ako ng bagong kotse, ng bagong bahay para maging masaya ako. Lahat tayo gusto maging masaya. Wala namang tao gusto maging miserable o malungkot habang buhay. Now, happiness is another word or name for good. Because happiness is the fulfillment of a man's distinct functions. As Aristotle says, happiness is a working of the soul in the way of the excellence of virtue. It has something to do with doing the right thing and doing it in a day-to-day -day basis. So how does the soul attain happiness? The general rule of morality is to act in accordance with the right reason ng tamang rason, ng tamang kaisipan. This means that the rational part of your soul should take control of the irrational part. Dapat kung ano yung tama, yun ang sasabihin, sinasabi ng isip, hindi yung, ay, hindi mo na ako mag-aaral, hindi mo na ako mag-module, mag-tiktok muna ako, mag-facebook muna ako, mag-post muna ako ng kung ano. No? Hindi ko muna sasagutin yung mga pinapagawa ni Sir Christian kasi hindi pa naman siya deadline. So, ganun, it desires. Your desires sometimes tempt you. Hinihila ka niya para sa tamang gawin. Eh, iba naman, ang ginagawa nila, gagawin ko na at gagawin ko na para later on, magawa ko yung mga gusto ko pang gawin. So, so, you weigh things, okay? When looking at our appetites or our desires, we discover that they are affected or influenced by things outside of the self, such as objects or people. Hence, what Aristotle suggests is that we should not be overwhelmed by our appetites or by our desires. We should always allow our reason to guide us since it is what is ought to be. Yan ang dapat mong sinusunod. Yan ang dapat mong ginagawa. Ang rason ang mag-guide sa'yo. At wala nang iba. So that's it. So that's for Aristotle. Now we go to Thomas Aquinas. Thomas Aquinas was born in 1225 near Naples. His father was a Count of Aquino who had hoped that his son would someday enjoy a high ecclesiastical position. His philosophy was immensely influenced by Aristotle. So, but his way of thinking was shaped in decisive ways through his long and intimate association with his teacher, Albert the Great. Now, Aquinas thought and wrote as a Christian. He was primarily a theologian. He relied heavily upon the philosophy of Aristotle in writing his theological works. He brought together philosophy and theology. His philosophy consists for the most part in the portion of his theology that he considered rationally demonstrable, that is, natural theology as philosophers of later centuries use this term. Now, for Aristo, ay, for Thomas Aquinas, uh, morality uh, is viewed not as an arbitrary set of rules of behavior. The basis of moral obligation is found in human nature itself. Built in man's nature are various inclinations such as the preservation of life, the propagation of species, and the search for the truth. The basic moral truth is simply to do good and to avoid evil. And we all know about that. 
Now, as a rational being, man is under a basic natural obligation to protect his life and health. Sino ba naman ang hindi po protektahan ng buhay? Sino ba naman ang hindi po protektahan ng kalusugan? Kapag lumalabas tayo, ingat na ingat tayo, lalo na ngayon pandemic. We cover our, uh, our mouth, we cover our face. So, mayroon tayong face mask, mayroon din tayong face shield. Why? Because we want to protect our health. We want to preserve our life. We want to survive it, whatever it takes. Merong, ito ah, pag malulunod ka na, anong gagawin mo? Kakapit ka dun sa tao na marunod lumangoy. At kahit ano, ihihilain mo siya pababa. Bakit? Because you want to be saved. That's your natural tendency. Oh, naalala ko nung bata pa kami, pag mangangarulin kami. December, o may, may aso. Aabulin kami ng aso. Ang gagawin ko, yung karlaro ko, hihilain ko, siyang ihaharang ko. Oh, that is a natural tendency for you to preserve your your life, your safety. Ganun ang tao. So, ewan, that is instinct, actually. And ganun din kayo. So, the natural inclination to propagate species forms the basis of union of wife and husband or of man and a woman. And any other basis for this relation would be wrong. So we have this natural uh, tendency or natural inclination to propagate new species. Kaya nga ang sabi ni natin, dapat ang magsasama, ang mag-unite lang man and the woman because they have the capacity to propagate new species. Kasi hindi naman makakapropagate ang dalawang lalaki o ang, o ang dalawang babae. Hindi sila magkakaanak, hindi sila makakabuo ng anak. Okay, biologically speaking, ha, pero pwede sila mag-ampon sa ibang konteksto na yun. Now, to ensure an ordered society, human laws are fashioned from the direction of the community's behavior. All of these activities of preserving life, propagating the species, forming ordered society under human laws, and pursuing the quest for truth only pertain to man to his natural level. Natural level lang ng man. Later on, ipapaliwanag ko sa inyo kung ano itong natural sa yung supernatural. Because human nature has certain fixed features, the rules for behavior that correspond to these features are called the natural law. Now, laws for Aquinas have to do primarily with reason. Okay, kasi influence sa kanya ni Aristotle. Human reason is the standard of our actions because it belongs to reason to direct our whole activity towards or toward man's end. He believes in the supremacy of reason. Law consists of these rules and measures of human acts and therefore is based upon reason. Aquinas consistently argues that since God created all things, human nature and natural law are best understood as the product of God's wisdom and reason. Later on, sa sabihin ni uh, Aquinas, hindi enough ang reason. Kung itong, enough, itong reason mo, hindi siya in connection with God or in connection with the grace of God. Because reason alone is not enough in order for you to attain happiness. Ano ang, nag, ang nag-udyok kay uh, Thomas Aquinas para i-adapt yung ganito na pagkaisipan? Because he is a Catholic bishop. Okay? is a priest. Aquinas built upon Aristotle's theory of ethics. Like Aristotle, he considered ethics as the quest for and the pursuit of happiness. Moreover, following Aristotle's lead, Aquinas argues that happiness is connected closely with our end or purpose. So to achieve happiness, we must fulfill our purpose. As a Christian, he views human nature as having both its source and ultimate end in God. Because of this, human nature does not contain its own standards of fulfillment. It is enough for us to simply be human and to exercise our natural functions and abilities in order for us to achieve perfect happiness. So the ingredients of our moral experience are provided by human nature. For one thing, the fact that we have bodies inclines us to certain kinds of acts. 
kasi may katawan naman tayo, our senses become the vehicle for appetites and our passions with our desires. Yung senses natin. Our senses also provide a certain level of knowledge about sensible objects so that we are attracted to some objects which we perceive as pleasurable and good and repel some objects which we perceive as harmful, painful, or bad. So this attraction and rejection are the rudiments of our capacity for love and pleasure and hate and fear. So the will in collaboration uh, with the power of reason consummates the human act. The will is the agency that inclines a person toward the achievement of good. Choices are made by our will under the direction, control, and guidance of reason. So for Aquinas, if we make the right choices, then we achieve happiness. So our will should be guided by our reason. To simply put, the will by itself cannot always make the right move. The intellect or reason must be its guide. Kasi yung isip po magsasabi kung ano ang tamang ginagawa. And uh, uh, innately, alam naman talaga natin yung dapat gawin at the, yung mga dapat nating iniiwasan. However, reason is not the final source of knowledge. O yan, dyan na, dyan na po pasok yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina. Because na, reason is natural. Reason only natural law. Sabi niyo dito, reason is not the natural source of knowledge. For our supernatural end requires God's grace, the appropriate object of the intellectual truth, and the truth in its fullness is God. That is according to Aquinas. Now, when the intellect directs the will, it helps the will to choose what is good. The intellect knows that there is a hierarchy of goods and that some goods are limited and must not be mistaken for our more of our most appropriate and ultimate good. Wealth, pleasure, fame, or power are all goods. Goods lahat yan. Okay? No doubt. They are legitimate objects of the appetites of our desires. Gusto natin lahat makuha yan mga yan. But they cannot produce our deepest happiness because they do not possess the character of the universal good that our soul seeks. Yung hinahanap ng ating kaluluwa, yung hinahanap ng ating pagkatao, yung, yung hinahanap ng ating uh, uh, kagustuhan para maging masaya. The perfect happiness is found not in created things, but in God, who is the supreme good. Ayun yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina, that for, uh, uh, ang pagkakaiba lang ni Aristotle, si kanil Thomas Aquinas, do inadapt ni Aquinas si Aristotle, sinabi ni Aquinas na hindi enough yung reason if it is not anchored in God, if it is not connected or interrelated with the grace of God. So, that's it, class. So, I hope uh, though the discussion is very technical, sana mas naintindihan ninyo or if there are other questions um, If there are some questions, I would be very willing to answer them. So, i-message nyo lang ako or uh, i-PM nyo lang ako or i-direct nyo sa ating group chat. And till next time, magkita-kita uh, tayo muli. And by the way, this is also open to, this lecture video is also open to the students of other ISU campuses and for other students then and special mention to my good friend uh, Wagi brother Janro Ares uh, Janro Bautista of ISU Kabagat so bro pwedeng pwede itong gamitin ng mga uh, estudyante mo diyan sa ISU Kabagat so until again next time class uh, for our philosophical coffee session this is your uh, instructor sir Christian Gonzalez saying you a goodbye goodbye class